and um, you know added uh, <laughs> worst case scenario for you probably Is a European like, champion once. once to go? Or what? Because it just seems like, oh, the rich kid gets whatever he wants again. It's like a fairy tale ending, is it? I mean, I, I don't quite understand. But yeah, at the same time, uh, good for the Miz, I suppose, because he deserves to actually actually uh, have a prominent role in the company. And as a champion, that's good for him, but not necessarily with Shane. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I, I think Shane, uh, it does sound like I'm really criticising him. I don't mean to be so harsh on the guy. Yeah, well, uh, you weren't alone, alone on that one either. We had a lot of emails about this. Um, but yeah, he pulled off the shooting star at the end, which, you know, got the pin. Um, of course, we have that moment outside the ring where uh, Miz's dad's there. <laughs> kind of thought to myself as they were hugging each other. I was like, I, I had visions of like, you remember the free birds when they used to defend their tag belts, like uh, like the New Day, where you can have anybody doing it I thought hang on a minute are they not going to bring his dad into this as well are they um, you know could be their own little group little posse going around now but uh, yeah I, I didn't really buy into this that much I feel for Seamus and Cesaro so much I don't know where these guys go um, from here it doesn't look too too rosy for them at the moment and I'm guessing Matt that you know Shane O'Mac and The Miz this could be a combination now. I'm presuming this is only going to go one way, and that's towards WrestleMania. Um, you know, I've got I've got visions here, Matt. I've seen these two. Why not just have Braun go out and call Nicholas back in and and uh, have the repeat? You know, except instead of the bar, they're they're facing these two guys. It might be a better match. It might be a closer match uh, if they're going to use Shane in the way of a non wrestler. But um, yeah, uh, jokes aside, um, I'm not. I'm not really looking forward to that moment. Goodness knows what they're going to do. I, I've got a feeling, Matt, that the tag team division will be left alone again. And what they'll probably do is have two singles guys. I mean, I could even see something with Kevin Owens here again. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that's the best they can come up with. Um, something to do with him um, when he gets back. But I hope not. I really do. But um, you, you don't know. What do you give this uh, out of five, Matt? Yeah, I've gone two and a half as well um, for this one. Yeah, it wasn't terrible, but uh, it certainly wasn't uh, my cup of tea, shall we say, um, on this. So, yeah, Miz and Shane, uh, tag team champions. The crowd, I did I did put the crowd did pop for this, so they did get the reaction at least uh, and celebrated with the Miz's dad. Um, good moment. I mean, goodness knows how many times uh, the Miz has won that tag team belt, Matt, with a variety of different partners in his time, but... It's another one to add to his list, uh, I'm sure. Um, then they announced the crowd, Matt. Uh, well, this is WWE's say-so. Officially for them is 48,193. And, um, you know, a lot of people there, no doubt about it. Um, and, yeah, it, it looped it as well uh, from just the way they shot it. So it was a good good atmosphere. I will say one thing. Uh, that a lot of people were saying that the crowd, you couldn't hear them as well. But I think... I think the building uh, wasn't that great for the acoustic at the sound because you've got one half that's just completely open at the other end. So you kind of lose the the noise um, out that way a lot of the times. But um, uh, for the most part, I think the the wrestlers could could get the vibe of what was going on. Um, So next up, Matt, we have... Um, well, they, they do quite an interesting thing here. Something different, which was good. I, I like this. It's something small, but, you know, they had... Um, what's that lady? Is it Charlie? Um, 
yeah. uh, go back and you know ask Sasha Banks about the fans thinking that she was um, you know destined to foul and Banks said uh, she puts everything she has into the ring and even though Ronda Rousey was a UFC Hall of Famer um, she's never faced anyone like her and then the music hits and I quite liked that I mean it was something small but something that worked very well for me and uh, yeah so this brings us to our next match which was Ronda Rousey defending um, the WWE Raw's women title uh, up against uh, Sasha Banks the boss of course and um, yeah what did you make of this one Matt because uh, you know this was something we were talking about a lot uh, on the preview of uh, what this was going to be all about. What did you think of it? Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, beforehand, I think we spoke about how we thought this match, like Sasha Banks as an opponent, would bring out the best of Ronda Rousey, and perhaps we'd see the best kind of match that she's had in WWE today. And I think they both went out there and accomplished that. I feel like it was a good story they told in the ring, because it certainly wasn't leading up to it. You know, it was all very sudden very rushed uh, but I feel like in the ring they definitely did a good job of it and you know some of it was a bit hit and miss I mean they had this whole back and forth thing where Ronda starts trying to do some Eddie Guerrero moves which is probably going to rub Sasha up the wrong way which it obviously did but then she's like you think I can't wrestle and then <laughs> Sasha proceeds to dominate the next probably 80% of the match <laughs> wrestling, out wrestling her with different kind of moves which uh, I think is quite good that we see this kind of side of Ronda that she isn't invincible that she does have vulnerabilities mm-hmm. uh, and it's almost like a win-win because of course Ronda gets the win out of this but at the same time it definitely looked like Sasha could hold her own in a, in a match like this against mm-hmm. uh, supposedly the top dog in the company uh, and I, I've come to a realisation now that now, Ronda's, I don't think Ronda's ever going to be the best kind of wrestler, but that's not really what her role is all about. She's there uh, to generate a buzz. She's got a big name behind her. And, yeah, she, she is competent in that ring and definitely has picked up this business very, very fast. Uh, but there'll always be a difference in uh, class between people like her, Sasha, Becky, Charlotte, all of that. You know, there's a lot of catching up to do on those kind of problems. Yeah, I totally agree with you there as well. I think that um, it was very noticeable. Uh, for me, this was actually, this was, I'd say I put this at number two in my most favourite Ronda's matches thus far in her WWE career because um, before that I had Charlotte's match at number two. but um, And of course her debut, I, that's the one I enjoyed the most. I felt like that was an excellent debut. And still to this point, I, that's the best, I think we've seen her as far as everything goes and considering how you know how long she'd been in it but um yeah this one for me this this was this was better than I thought yeah it was clunky there were some bits that weren't going well but it's clunky in a way that's kind of like it's like when you watch MMA and you watch guys and girls try and put on moves but they don't quite get it and you know their opponent gets out of it or something but you can you can obviously tell what they were intending to do it's it's clunky like that so it does help sometimes because it doesn't look too like you're not going to get the fans go you know uf'd up all the time because it it's got a kind of mma sort of look to it when she's doing it which which does help her um and as matt said i think that he's right i mean you got to remember, I mean, people talk about Brock Lesnar, they talk about Kurt Angle's first years. Don't forget Brock Lesnar, I mean, he'd done two years worth of OVW before that uh, with the likes of Randy Orton and Batista. When you think of Ronda Rousey, it's incredible, really, that she's the champion, that they've pushed her into this you know, position where she can, she's very vulnerable there, especially to the crowd, especially, (laughs) I tell you what, Matt, and I'm going to say this much, um, you should watch the latest episode of 24. It's about last year's WrestleMania. And I think you might pity Ronda when you start to see the advice Vince McMahon was giving her um, before the match. I think you might have a better understanding of why this is all going terribly wrong. Um, I certainly did anyway. But yeah, for anyone that hasn't seen that, well recommended. It's the one, of course, where we've got this clip of Brock Lesnar throwing or literally chucking the title at Vince McMahon in gorilla position. A hilarious moment and uh, definitely worth a watch for anybody that hasn't seen this now uploaded but but 
Yeah, anyway, cut a long story short, in this 24 episode, there's bits in it where you've got sort of Paul Heyman giving a really sound advice, and then you've got Vince, who's not. And of course, he uses that quote, Matt. I think I've read it out before on the podcast where he's like, don't look serious, just smile. Everyone wants to hug you. <laughs> Strong, sexy, powerful. Every time you smile. Um, yeah, awful, really. And um, yeah, I, you know, I, I do feel like uh, if she's she's going to take advice, of course, if you've, if you you know, you're not going to look beyond somebody like Vince McMahon. Let's be honest here. He's been around the game so much. So it, it's, uh, you can see why these things are happening in her character. Uh, one couple of points here mentioning, Matt, the crowd did seem to uh, not respond that well to Ronda Rousey even more when she came out uh, in the match i thought during the match i thought it was it was fine but um yeah i mean this this went just under 14 minutes um and like i said i i enjoyed this this is probably the second best stouting i've seen for ronda it was a title match um I might sound a little bit biased here but i'm gonna give this a four because i don't really see they could have done much more I, i wasn't a massive fan of the build to this match i've got to be honest with you and it's it's only because, um, similar to Oscar, why are we doubting Sasha Banks so much when really she's you know a credible star? But uh, they just have done a very bad job of booking her, and I don't think they ever intended um, for this match to, to sort of take place. Or if they did, they've done a shambolical, diabolical job, really, of, of uh, you know, it's a complete shambles if this is the best and how they book people. But, uh, yeah, so for me, I give this a four. What about you, Matt? Yeah, I think you're right there. I think the four is sort of, I mean, it sounds like we agree with each other a lot, but I feel like we just see it as it is. And, yeah. and there wasn't a lot more they could have done with this. And yes, yeah, Sasha did a lot of the heavy lifting because, like we said, there is a bit of a gulf difference between the two, like the technical work in the ring. But I feel like in the end, they did what they had to do. And the ending, what was that about? I mean, I don't know Ronda. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you bring that up. I think it was kind of like a signature move. I didn't even know it was a finisher. I didn't know the match had even ended. So I was like, wait a minute, that was a free. Come on, I thought that was just a regular one of her moves, but apparently not. Um, and then after that, oh, don't tell me. Like, this whole four fingers up kind of deal is just not going to be a whole... What? I, I didn't get that because, um, I mean, at one <laughs> point they were happy with each other. There was a respect thing in the ring. And then when Ronda got out, then she pulled the four and I was like, what? I, you know, I kind of had to double look it. I thought this was over. Um, and then she sort of went off quite smug looking. So I thought, oh, no, they, they probably are going to set up. Like, did they forget to do something? I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I was thinking, oh, no, here we go. Um, <laughs> we're going to get it. But that was, that was a little bit confusing right there uh, for me. What did you... Uh, did you rate that one yet, Matt? Oh, sorry, I've kind of missed it if you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I reckon four as well. Yeah, okay, fair uh, enough. There wasn't a lot more scope yeah. to actually increase the rating there. Fair enough. Um, okay, what we've got in the notes. Yeah, after that is all done with, we then sell, they put on Finn Balor. They show Finn Balor backstage and they show him with no face paint. <laughs> so I think that was sort of to get everyone prepared. You're not going to see the demon tonight because, you know, that would have been done ages ago. So, um, yeah, it, it, you know, it would have it been amazing if he'd have come out of the demon after seeing that, Matt, if they'd have just shot that from earlier. And then, you know, all of a sudden he does come out. That would have been an even huge pop, wouldn't it? But uh, no, I think they did that to sort of keep everybody uh, excitement levels down and don't expect to see the demon. Um, so they, they showed Finn Balor backstage without face paint. And then, of course, we get to the 30 Women's Royal Rumble match. Um, and this had lots of different stuff going on in it. I mean... Uh, I think for me, I'm. I I said in the preview, I did not want to keep hearing this whole, you know, thanks for letting us compete type attitude anymore. And thankfully, that was wasn't the case. And I was really glad that they focused just on the match this time. Um, I mean, I think, I think I kind of prefer this to against. I don't, it's difficult. I think last year's ending was a little bit better, but I think this one for me, as as far as 
a women's Royal Rumble. I think this was more natural. This was this is how they're hopefully gonna be uh, in in the future going on. Maybe just because last year they just kept repeating themselves every time somebody come out. But um, I actually. 